Okay, today we're gonna to be working with Blender 2.78a, or any Blender around that number should work. And we're gonna be doing some motion tracking. Now keep in mind there is a difference between motion tracking and camera tracking. I may do a video on camera tracking in the future, but right now we're gonna do some motion tracking. Uh, and I did this a while ago uh, in Blender when they first got the feature. I just thought I'd do an updated video. If you check out in the description of this video, hopefully I have a link to a YouTube video, which will be the video I'm using right now. So you can download the exact same file. I've uploaded it to YouTube and downloaded it, so we'll be working with the same exact copy as you if you download the uh, 1080p version. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first of all, anytime you're working with Blender, you got to remember that Blender is working with frames per second. It's working with frames, uh, not necessarily a timestamp. So if you're going to be working with any type of video clip in Blender, be sure before you really start doing anything to change the frame rate to the frame rate of the videos you're working with. So I'm going to change mine to 30 frames a second here. Next, I'm going to delete the default cube. I'm gonna press one on my number pad and control alt zero on the number pad to bring my camera into front view. Some people like to do it from a top view down when doing this sort of stuff. I do it from the front view because if I decide to do any type of physics stuff, I want down to be down. Uh, although I, you know, I don't have the grid here, but I don't really use that grid when I'm doing this anyway. So at this point, I'm gonna go up to where it says default here and change a different layout. I'm gonna choose uh, motion tracking. So now I can click open and I can choose the video I want to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and import that clip. Uh, the first part of this clip, I can scroll through and it gets me getting ready. So I'm just going to go to frame 30 and that's where I'm going to start with this particular project. So I'm going to change my start frame here to 30. And if I go all the way through, it seems good till I get to the end here. Yeah, pretty good. So let me go ahead and go to the first frame here and say prefetch. And you'll see this little purple line going here. And in some cases, it will go all the way to the end. Some cases, it will stop. So what it's doing is it's preloading the video into your RAM so it's ready to go. But Blender has a certain amount of RAM allocated for it at the beginning. And this video is too large. If it was uh, more compressed or a smaller, uh, re lower resolution, you might get it all. So what we're going to do here, since it's only, see if I press uh, Alt-A here, it's going to play smooth until it gets this point. It might. In this case, it's playing through, but you can see the track is getting, uh, it's not all staying purple. If you want it to all be purple, we're gonna go into user preferences, system, scroll down here, and here you can see sequencer, clip editor, uh, memory cache limit. And now don't overload your system. I have eight gigs of RAM, and I also have eight gigs of swap space set up. So I'm gonna set this to, to four gigs. By default, it's one, so I probably only need two for this particular project, but if you can't prefetch the whole thing, try increasing this number. Just don't go higher than the RAM you have and leave some space, you know, some buffer room. But I'm gonna go it's four gigs there, and now if I click prefetch, it should be able to prefetch the whole thing. There we go. Um, and some projects that makes more of a difference than others, uh, but definitely for this, I would say go ahead and do that. Next, we're gonna say here where it says marker, we're gonna say add, and I'm gonna click. Now, when you're motion tracking, it's a great idea to put markers in your video. I purposely didn't do that because I wanted to make it more difficult for our tracking. I wanted to track actually something in the video that I don't have to try to get rid of later, even though our 3D model is gonna be over it. But we're gonna click mark add, and I'm gonna click just uh, you know on my hand right here in this dark spot between my fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and then I can hit S to scale it up a little bit, and then G to move it around, and you can see a close-up view right here. At this point, make sure you're at the first frame. In this case, our first frame is frame 30. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here, and under track, I'm gonna go ahead and track forward. Now, you notice it goes a little bit and stops. So you also notice that my hand gets kind of blurry on how fast I'm moving. So it's kind of lost its tracking point. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit left arrow, once to go back a frame and then just grab and kind of reposition it. And a lot of times you don't even need to really move it. And then we'll track some more and we'll go a little bit further and stop. And this might happen a lot depending on how clear your video is. One way to get this, and I've watched a lot of videos and most of them don't mention this, as you notice it's saying match here, it says keyframe. So here it's the keyframe, it's trying to look for the keyframe that it originally was searching on. If we change this to previous frame, you're gonna get some better, uh, it's gonna lose the tracking less often because it's not gonna look at, hey, 100 frames ago, what did this look like? It's gonna look at, what did it look like one frame ago? Now you're more likely to 
have it go off its tracking a little bit, but that doesn't really seem to happen too much. So if you're having an issue where it's constantly losing its tracking, you might want to try switching this to previous rather than keyframe. So I'm going to do now again, I'm going to hit left arrow one more time. And if I hover over this uh, tracking forward button, you can see it says shortcut, it says control T. So instead of going back and forth, I'm just going to hit control T, it'll track a little bit more. I'm going to grab and move it a little bit, control T, and then I'm going to grab and move it to where it needs to be, control T, grab and move it where it needs to be, control T, and grab. And again, the reason we're losing it so much is just because my hand is so blurry. And that has to do with lighting and stuff like that, and just how defined uh, my, my tracker is. Um, so this might seem a little annoying, but imagine we're doing you know, over 200 frames here. If it didn't have the motion tracking, even though it's losing it some here, it's still better than going through frame by frame. I probably only had to stop maybe six or seven times there. Uh, it's better than, again, trying to do it frame by frame. Now that I've gotten to the end, I can hit Alt A and you can see, make sure that my little tracker follows uh, my hand. Now, again, because of the blurriness and me adjusting it, it might be off a little bit. You might, if you're going for real realism, you might want to spend a little more time. One, again, put trackers, something that you can track uh, better in the scene. Make sure you use better uh, lighting and stuff like that. And uh, But this is good enough for this little project here. We're getting a pretty good track here. So we're going to hit escape to stop that. So how do we take this 2D tracker on this 2D image and relate it to a 3D world? What we're going to do here is we're going to go over here to solve. And I am going to go to geometry and say link empty to track. Now I click that and you'll see up here in our 3D view, all of a sudden we have an empty. We're done with the motion tracking part of this. We can now go up here to our layout and go back to default, our 3D view here. And you can see that in our 3D scene, we have a empty, which is just something that's you're not going to see your render. It's basically a point. But when I hit Alt-A, you can see it's moving around. And if I hit zero on my number pad to go to camera view, you can see it's moving around in about where my hand was. So I'm going to do now is going to hit escape. I'm going to hit N to bring out this side uh, panel here. And I'm going to go down to background image. I'm going to click check that. I'm going to say add image and then here I'm going to say open and select the same file that I selected before. Now we can see a background image here and I can hit Alt A and you can see that tracker following my hand. Now if I hit F12 you're not going to see that background video. We'll get to that in a moment. But now we can link any 3D object to that empty. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit spacebar and over the, make sure your cursor's over the 3D view and hit spacebar. I'm going to type in uh, monkey or you can import whatever model or create whatever model you want. So we have a monkey. I'm going to smooth it so it looks a little nicer. And I'm going to grab it and line it up uh, kind of with my hand. It doesn't even have to be right with the tracker because it's going to move relative to the tracker. So I'm going to put it there so it's over my hand and you can see it's, it's right there by the tracker. And of course, at this point, it's not tracking, but with the monkey selected and I shift select that tracker, I can then hit uh, control P and set the parent. So now this empty, which we don't see when we render, is now it's the parent of our monkey, which means the, the monkey follows it, just like children follow their parents. And I can hit Alt A now to play the preview and you can see it's following my hand. Not perfect, it wobbles around a little bit again because our tracking wasn't perfect. Um, so now, if I hit F12 again, you can see the monkey. The lighting's in the background and it's it's you're gonna wanna move your lighting. I like to go to my world tab here. And again, I'm working with the internal blender renderer. So if you're gonna work with cycles, hopefully you know how lighting works in that. I'm gonna hit environment lighting, change that to, uh, no, sorry, environment lighting and ambient occlusion, occlusion and change that to multiply. I just like the look of the ambient occlusion with the environment lighting. Uh, what I'm also gonna do, just to make it look a little nicer, I'm going to uh, subsurface that monkey and so we can hit F12 now you can see what it looks like and I'm also going to give it a, a material we'll give it we'll make it a green monkey how about that now I can hit F12 and that's what it looks like now you'll notice that our background is a gray it's our sky color we can adjust what our sky looks like but we want to get rid of our sky because we don't want to see the sky so what we're gonna do here is under our render tab I'm gonna scroll down to someplace 
uh, shading, yes, shading, and then here where it says alpha sky, we're gonna say transparent. So that's basically saying anything is not a 3D model that we can't see, do you wanna render it to look like the sky in our scene or just make it transparent? And we want it to be transparent. I'm gonna hit F12 and now you can see instead of a gray background, you get this checkered background. That means it's transparent. You can't see what's there. I'm also gonna turn, uh, well, I'll leave that there for a second so I can explain that later. Okay, so we're good at this point. We don't have our background image. At this point, we're gonna move into the compositor, which can be overwhelming. There's lots of different ways to put images and videos in the background of your scene. Uh, and I think this is probably one of the best is using the compositor here. So choose compositor. We're gonna choose use nodes and we're gonna add a backdrop. And I'm gonna shift A and add an output of a viewer. Put that over here and I'm gonna right click and G. The keys in here are the same as in, in any other part of Blender. You're gonna you know, right click stuff. I can uh, drag this here. And there you can see our monkey in the background. G to move these around. And now I'm gonna shift A, add an input, and I'm gonna choose movie clip. And here from this dropdown, I'm gonna choose our video clip again. And that will be our video clip. I'm going to drag that here and now shift A again and I'm going to go to color and I'm going to go to alpha over and I'm going to choose put that there and I'm going to put this here and it's kind of confusing here you want your top video in the bottom uh, input here so our background goes on the top you would think it would go the other way which your reveals on top you would put on top but that's not how it works anyway so there's our monkey now you'll notice the monkey isn't lined up with my hand why is that well the reason is because our view our video is 1080p in this case right well if you look over here at our render settings you'll notice it's set to 1080p but it's set to render at 50% so if I put this up to 100% and hit F12 it renders out now the size is matched now let's say you want to render out a, a uh, quick render of it so at a lower resolution just see how it looks well again if I put this down to like 50 or 25 percent and render it out the images aren't going to line up also we want to make sure our connect our alpha over here we're looking at the viewer the preview here we also want to make sure in the end we have it connected to our composite here so here's what our actual render looks like right now there's our monkey but you can't see our whole video because we're rendering at 25%, but the video is still full size. The way you adjust this is Shift A, and under Distort, we're gonna choose Scale, and we're gonna drop that in here between the movie clip and our alpha over. And here, we can change this to Render Size. And now, no matter what size we set our renderer to, the video is going to be resized to match. And that is pretty much it. At this point, we choose how we want to render the output and, um, and render it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose XVID here. I'm gonna do encoding XVID, but choose whatever uh, you know, rendering you want. I'm gonna make sure I put this at 100%. I'm gonna choose where I want this video to go. Uh, for now, I'll just throw it in my temp folder. I'll call it, call it monkey tracking. There we go, uh, accept. And then at this point I can click animate and it will start rendering out our video here. And right now I'm getting on my machine about a second and a half per frame. We've got just over 200 frames. So it's gonna take a couple of minutes, but I'll play the rendered out version at the end here. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, other things you might wanna think about, I didn't go over in this is if you want the original audio, uh, you can use the sequence editor to lay down the audio and then you can add a codec here. We have none, we can change this to whatever audio you want and then the audio will play or you can use, you can render out the video and add the audio back later. Uh, right now I'm just rendering it without audio. Uh, but that's it. Now, you know, doing this, there's no shadows casted on me. There's stuff you can do to do that. Basically you'd put like a invisible 3D object that renders shadows only where my hand is, motion track that, and then the shadows will be cast on that 3D object, but you won't see the 3D object, you only see the shadows on it. Uh, you'll see that a little bit if I end up having time to do that camera tracking video. And uh, that is pretty much it. And this is, uh, 
I'll, I'll post it again. Check out the description of this video where you can download this exact video I'm working with. And again, I uploaded it and then downloaded it from YouTube to make sure that I'm working with the same quality copy as you so there's no questions to you know the quality being a problem. Although I also uh, did a test on this with the same video at half resolution. It still worked. You know, the picture, the picture looked, the video looked more pixelated when I zoomed in, but it still tracked it no problem. And that is it. I thank you for watching. Uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to that. There you can search through all my videos from this channel and my uh, other channel. Also think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com. If you like my videos and want to support me, patreon.com forward slash x 1000 is a great way to do that. Link in the description. Even a dollar a month is much appreciated. If you can't support me regularly, uh, if you go to, again, filmsbychris.com, you can... Um, uh, there's a PayPal link there that you can send me stuff uh, money through that'd be great I appreciate that and don't feel like you have to support me financially I would really appreciate it if you did but if you can't if you like this and you found it useful or if you find my videos useful be sure to like subscribe and comment uh, those things help me out a lot and as always I hope that you have a great day here is that video finally rendered